Hello again, welcome to another Maya tutorial. Uh, today I will be showing you how to set up an image plane um, and the best ways to match perspective and lighting in a scene. Uh, this way you can take your uh, render into Photoshop and composite it in, add shadows and uh, small details like that, but you'll have the main 3D image out of Maya. Um, and I'll go over how to render with transparent background and stuff in uh, a later video. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to make a simple sphere. Uh, hit 5 to shade it. Um, I'm also going to make a simple blend shader and then middle click and drag that onto the sphere. Um, and like I did in the previous video, I'm going to set a texture, an image texture onto the sphere. So, turn textures on, um, and there's our lovely sphere. Okay, so um, you have a, a couple ways of setting up an image plane. The easiest way I've found is to go view, image plane, import image. You then select your image that you're, you want to be your image plane. Okay, so as you can see, um, if I scroll out too far, it disappears behind the image. Uh, I, don't, I don't want the sphere that big, uh, the globe that big sitting on the table. So what I'm going to do is I need to come down here with the image plane selected. Come down here um, and depth. And let's just add a zero to that. That should give us enough depth. So now, as you can see, I can zoom out much further. I pushed the image plane back and I didn't resize it. Okay, so this is where the grid comes really handy because as you can see, it gives us a nice point of reference that we can line up to this edge of the table. So if we can get this line to line up with this line, then we know our perspective is pretty close. Um, okay, so turn this a little bit. see it better like so okay so if I render this and I hit render it's okay so we have it in the scene and we match our perspective and what I recommend um, is to avoid pictures with crazy perspective in them um, that use like fisheye lenses or super telephoto lenses because that'll make it a lot more difficult to match um, match up your lines you'll have to change your camera um, you have to change your camera lens and that's that's more difficult to get to match because then you have to start guessing on what kind of lens they used and how far away they were and other things like that okay so now we need to match the lighting or at least get it close enough to be believable. Um, and if you if you notice, I don't want to move this because if I move my camera, it's going to screw up um, my placement of my globe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new camera. So I'm going to go create cameras camera, and then I'm going to go panels perspective camera one. This will put my view plane in the camera I just made. And as you can see, we can see the image plane, however, we're not tied to it. So we're free to add in lights and adjust them how we see fit. So I'm going to go create, lights, spotlight. Going to move it up, rotate it down. Because nope. if you notice from this lighting, it looks like there's a light over the table that's shining straight down and there's hard shadows on the front of objects and on the back of objects and underneath objects. So the main light source is coming from the center of the table and it's off center because my globe's over here and it looks like the light is right above the middle of the table. Um, uh, let's turn on lighting to give us an idea of what we're doing. 
Uh, I'm going to up the cone angle a little bit just to make sure that we grab the globe and the cone um, and just adjust that, soften it up. Um, I'm also going to adjust the color of the lighting because this is uh, tungsten lighting it looks like in this room so I need to make it um, more of an orange color. Uh, this is a uh, color I used earlier. I'm just going to use that. Um, it has those RGB values if you want to uh, use it as well. Okay, so if we look at this, we notice that while the color looks about right, maybe it's a little strong. Maybe we'll tone it down a little bit. Um, it's not intense enough. We don't have a real strong highlight in the middle. So I'm just going to pull the intensity up a little bit. And then I can probably pull my color in a little bit more. Give a little more color. Something like that, maybe. Okay. So now we have that. Um, let's go back to our perspective we have set up. And hit render. Okay, we're closer. However, although there is a strong drop off here, there is a lot of ambient light in the room bouncing off the walls and such. Um, coming from these lights over here, and there's probably more lights over on the other side of these cabinets right here. So we need to add in ambient light for fill. Um, so I'm just going to go create lights, ambient light. Um, I'm going to scoot it in the front of my globe so it fills the front area um, I'm going to change the color to the same color we used and I'll probably down the intensity about like that so now if we render that we're pretty close it looks weird right now because we don't have it anchored with a shadow or anything so the easiest way to add that if you were compositing is take this image into Photoshop and then add your image, um, give your image a shadow, a um, little bit of reflection, this, this kind of like diffused uh, reflection. Um, Alright, so that is how you match lighting and perspective in an image um, in Maya. Um, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you all in my next video. Um, in my next video, I'm going to be covering how do you render this said image uh, with a transparent background. So, and so you can take it into Photoshop and use it. So, uh, I'll see you there.